Okay, so let's try uh, and do a, a piezoelectric shear mode actuator uh, in ANSYS. So this, this paper here has a, a nice example of the potential shear modes. But the main point is that what you're doing is applying an electric field normal to the polarization direction. So you can view it almost as, as tilting the dipole rather than extending or contracting it in sort of D33 or D31 mode. In D15 mode, and B is a good example because this is what we're going to model or try and model. We pole it through thickness. So you can imagine there's a dipole along that direction, but we apply uh, electrodes at the side. So the electric field is uh, in this one direction, the X direction, so it's normal to the polling direction, and that will tilt the dipole. So that will lead to uh, a shear uh, of the device. So let's think how we, we just do that. So I'm going to create a, quite a large device, sort of one meter by one meter by uh, 0.2 meters thick, just to try and keep a similar aspect ratio to this, this image here. So remember, it's poled through the thickness. Uh, that will be the Z direction uh, defined by the, the properties that we input into ANSYS. And then we'll apply the electric field at... Uh, 90 degrees along the, the X axis by placing uh, electrodes at each side. And that should give us a, a shear. And uh, if we think of a mechanical boundary condition, if we imagine if we can select all the central nodes along that device and it, and it undergoes sort of pure shear, then uh, these nodes are not going to move in the X direction along the center. Uh, they're not going to go up or down either. So they won't move in the, the Z direction and they won't move in and out of the, the plane um, of the, the page as well. So if I can select all these central nodes and get it to mesh right down the middle, um, I can apply that as a, a nice boundary condition to get some symmetry. OK, so uh, in ANSYS, so remember we've uh, previously, oh, previously input the materials properties and loaded up the coupled field element for the material which is pzt 5h so i've just done that now so that was on the previous video so we've got uh, structural electrical preferences we've got a coupled field element and in terms of the materials properties materials models we've got our linear structural elastic anisotropic material because it's polled along the three direction. So we've put in the, the stiffness matrix of the material. We've also input the piezoelectric matrix. So we put in the, the stress matrix. So uh, these are the shear coefficients. This is E15 here uh, in here. Uh, so uh, we have that, that's coulombs per meter squared. This is the E33 coefficient. This is the E31 uh, coefficient. Uh, and we should also have the permittivity. Again, that's going to be orthotropic. So it's polled in the Z, remember. And so we have a slightly different permittivity in the Z compared to the X and Y. So these are relative uh, permittivities. It's good. So let's create our geometry. So um, we'll do some modeling and create a block by dimensions and we'll make it uh, one meter by one meter in the x and y and to get a, a similar aspect ratio to that example that was from the paper uh, it'll be slightly thinner uh, in that polarization uh, direction so we've got something that looks a little bit uh, like like that um, uh, device that we saw earlier so we then mesh it. So we use, just use the mesh tool. And remember, the boundary condition, I wanted some nodes right down the middle. So if I have six elements per division, and I mesh that, um, so it's just telling me I should uh, ideally not use solid five, but it's a very simple shape, so we'll, we'll be fine. So by having six per division, you can see I've got some, uh, I'll have some nodes right down the middle to, to make applying that boundary condition uh, quite quite easy. So yeah, so here's the z-axis. 
uh, here pulled through the thickness and remember what I'm going to do is apply an electric field in the, the Z in the X uh, direction so I want an electrode on this side so I make this a coupled set and I want an electrode in this side so if I select um, entities all the nodes uh, as a box I can select all these uh, nodes here and I make that couple set one so CP comma one in the degree of freedom volt are all my selected nodes and that's all my nodes uh, and I'll just select everything again and then if I select entities again I'll select nodes okay as a box again I'll select the nodes on the, the right hand side and make that my second electrode so CP2 couple set 2 in the degree of freedom volt all my selected nodes oh why didn't that work CP2 did I have a, a wrong command CP2 volt or that's fine so that's hopefully has, has worked Select everything again and plot, replot. That seems all right. That's uh, that's fine. Yeah, so that's, that seemed to be okay. Ah, I didn't have a a comma, uh, so it's CP comma two. That's why that didn't work. So that's fine. Okay, so I have electrodes on this side here. Uh, it's poled in the Z. Uh, so uh, really, I'm 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 ready now to apply my electrical boundary condition and my mechanical boundary condition. On my coupled set, let's just see which of the, the master nodes. So uh, coupled set one, the master node is one. So all my other uh, nodes on that electrode will follow. So I can just apply a voltage to node one. And on my second coupled set, uh, my second electrode, the master's eight. So I'll remember that, one and eight. And if uh, I can apply a potential difference just by applying a potential difference to those two two nodes okay so let's um, therefore apply some loads so if I look at my um, modeling I've created my structure so that's fine I can look at my solution I'm just going to do a static solution look at the defining the loads now so I apply a structural let's apply my structural boundary condition first um, on the nodes remember the, all those central nodes as a box so I'm going to select all these central nodes right down the the plane along here okay and remember they they won't I'm not expecting any movement in X because uh, it's the other nodes that will move I'm not expecting it to go up and down and I'm not expecting those to go in and out of the plane. So I'll fix those by having a, a zero uh, boundary condition. And then I can apply my electric field by having uh, a potential difference across nodes one and eight. So on node one, I'll apply zero volts. And on node eight, I'll apply just one volt that's good so I've got my loads applied so I should now be able to think about solving it solve the current load step I've got two warnings that's because I've got a magnetic and temperature degree of freedom uh, and that's that's not really an issue so I can look for solving it it's solved so that's good it's quite quick so let's uh, have a look at the general post prop Let's look at the deformed and undeformed shape. And yeah, so I've got a, a nice shear um, of my uh, device, of my component, by applying this electric field in the X when it's poled through uh, the Z. Uh, that's good. It seems to work nicely. So let's have a look at the numbers. Nodal solution. Let's have a look at that displacement in X. So I've got uh, a displacement of uh, here, the bottom end of, of, of plus 0 0.7, 
4 times 10 to the minus 10 meters and at the top I've got a, a negative displacement of equal uh, in magnitude minus 0 0.74 uh, nanometers. That's good and let's just have a look at the electric field in the x direction. Well it's one meter separation and one volt so uh, let's have a have a look. Oh, it says it's not available. Sometimes you have to read the data in the first set to results. So let's try that again. So uh, nodal solution electric field X. Yeah, so I've got a one minus one volts uh, per meter. And of course, let's do a vector plot of the electric field as well, which is a flux. Electric field. Yeah, so that's on the x direction. I can even plot the uh, displacement uh, there as well. You can see there's clear, clear shear uh, along there, Z zero in the middle, uh, and then at maximum at the, at the top uh, and bottom. And the, the magnitude uh, is there uh, 0.74 times 10 to the minus 10. Good, that seems to uh, have uh, worked quite nicely. Seems to have worked nice. Is the, do the numbers stack up again? So let's have a have a look. Uh, so remember, it's a, an electric field in this direction, poled in this direction, and uh, it's a very uh, quick calculation. So my electric field obviously is one volt per meter because this distance is one meter, and I've got one volt across it. The strain um, is is delta x divided by L. So remember that was um, 0.74 times 10 to the minus 10 uh, meters and this distance is half that so it's 0.1 meter so I've got a, a strain of 740 uh, times 10 to the minus 12 so 740 pico strain and D15 well what is that it's the shear strain per unit electric field so uh, it's this value divided by the electric field so that comes out at 740 picometers per volt. And if we look at PZT5H, this is some data from the uh, literature or from the, the internet. PZT5H here, uh, if we look at the shear coefficient, D15, 741 picometers per volt. So that's in very good agreement. So this is a very much a reasonable uh, a strain per field that strain per unit electric field that we would expect.